look into the camera and just say hello and welcome to a special and uh, just say hello and welcome to another episode of Board at the Right Time. Hello and welcome to another episode of Board at the Right Time. Today for our season and year opener, we're going to have a special discussion about the Beatles' Get Back. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in today. Today we're going to discuss uh, two of my favorite topics, which are Paul McCartney and the Beatles. While me and my best friend in the whole wide world drink coffee. Lift your coffee cup, buddy. Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. So this is my best friend in the whole wide world, Austin Joy. He runs, what channel do you run? Air for Effect. Air for Effect, that's also the name of his band. A lot of people are doing reviews for the Get Back film that the Beatles made. And I thought, um, you know, how can I make mine different? What I came up with was that I would sit with my best friend who is kind of a casual Beatles fan, I'd say. He's not a full-blown fanatic like me. And I'd like to kind of look at the film through his eyes. So I have a couple questions I'm gonna ask him and then he's gonna pr probably try to answer them and then I'm gonna school him and we're just gonna have a conversation while we drink coffee and. Sounds like a plan. So, Austin, first impressions of the film? Long. I agree, it's, it's a little too long, right? This is what I've been going back and forth over. I don't know, I don't know if it's too long or it's just, I, I love watching making of documentaries, behind the scenes of albums, all that kind of stuff. It's one of my favorite, those are my favorite things to watch. But with this one, they went in not really knowing what they were going to do, it seems. Um, I don't know, like, the full, full backstory, but I know that they wanted to do a film. But, and then I know Paul really wanted to do an album. And it just seems like, I don't think there was a, like, it seems so unfocused, their whole process, that I don't know if it could have been trimmed down because it's like capturing all of this craziness. We're both big David Lynch fans. Um, and Seinfeld, you know, both movies and shows kind of not necessarily about nothing, but more about a feel. The more I sit with it, I feel like Get Back has it. I feel like it captures accurately the feel of what it was like to work on those songs and try to get all this together. But that doesn't necessarily make it enjoyable. It seemed like a pretty arduous process. There's a there's a lot of cool parts like where Paul McCartney just comes up with Get Back. You know, it's like a protest song first, and then he starts talking about Loretta Martin and the gang. And um, so, I mean, there's lots of inspirational kind of things there. So, I mean, there is a lot of merit for the film. Like, there needs to be some kind of film because they have all this footage. I agree with you. It was a little too long. I think we could have gotten a really strong two-part film, maybe four hours. I think four hours we could we could have done. I don't think hour and a half. I don't think two hours. But, I mean, it, it's it's also long because... And no disrespect to him, because I, I do love the, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. But Peter Jackson is not known for his concise editing. I mean, this is the guy who turned The Hobbit, a 300-page book, into three, like, three-hour movies. He made a World War II documentary, a World War I documentary, that was shorter than this. I, I watched that documentary because I was interested in the topic. I kind of don't understand the process that he used to make that. And I'm afraid that he kind of might have used some digital manipulation on here. And we kind of like what you see isn't always what you get. I know he did that with the audio on this a little bit, right? Like some sometimes you're seeing the, the film and them talking, but it's different audio. That's just editing. You know what I mean? Like you need to have picture and sound match up. My only qualm with the editing is that you can tell that they didn't always have, you know, visuals for the sound because there was obviously more sound. Yeah. My only thing was is that instead of cutting to George for like the last second or the last phrase of a word because the mouth looks like it's saying that, I'd rather just not have that cut because it's so frenetic and so quick, so kind of, yeah. it's, it's almost crazy. dizzying. Yeah, yeah, that was, it was trippy. And maybe that's what it was like when they were doing it, but as a viewer, it's it's not fun to watch. There's so many quick cuts. I'd rather just I'd rather just have black frames, like no video found or something like that. 
Well, that that brings me to uh, another point that I wanted to, to discuss with you. What do you think most, almost all of these documentaries, including like that four hour, you know, Tom Petty documentary, which just gets better and better as it goes along. Um, what would you think had they done talking heads throughout this? Well, then we would end up with the anthology. We already have the anthology. I kind of like the narratorless approach that they took. They're just kind of like, let the film do the narrating, let the film speak for itself. I just think that it needs to be shorter. So I think the three parts work well. The three parts being in Twickenham, that clearly wasn't working. George leaves the band. They try to get Eric Clapton. <laughs> George comes back, great. Part two, they move to Saddle Row. Billy Preston now kind of comes in a little more. George Martin is more like a central character. And a lot of the things that people forget is that George Martin pretty much produced those sessions. The thing is, is that they really weren't recording an album. So to go back to your original kind of question, the purpose of this um, documentary was to get the Beatles to play live again. You know, Paul McCartney was always the driving force behind the Beatles. Ringo and the anthology says something like, you know, he'd be relaxing and then it'd be Paul calling to say, let's get back to work. If Paul didn't push them so much after Brian Epstein died, I'm pretty sure we probably wouldn't have some of the stuff that we do. They probably would have broken up even earlier. So anyway, the driving, I guess, idea behind Let It, Let it Be, which is now called Get Back, was to film them getting ready for this live performance where they would film, um, you know, the behind the scenes and they would film the performance, but the whole performance would be a um, live performance from start to finish. There would be no overdubs. So like the piano tracks, someone needs to play piano, so John would have to play bass. So that, that, that was the story behind um, Let It Be, which is now called Get Back. Now, anything else for first impressions before we move on to the next question? I was never a, a huge fan. Uh, like I know this is, you know. Sacrilegious, just say it. A lot of people love every, you know, everything the Beatles did was gold. I don't know if I could say it about any band. Um, but the, I was never the biggest fan of Let It Be. And, uh, you let me hear Let It Be Naked years ago. And it, that changed my mind initially. I was like, okay, so the, these songs themselves are really good. Um, it's just what Phil Spector did to them. <laughs> yeah. Well, this gave me more respect for the album. And I think also more respect for the people involved, including Yoko. So... Yeah, so the first impression I got was I really think that Yoko needs to be, like someone needs to take out a public apology and put up billboards. Um, <laughs> because all she did was sit there. What was weird is it they, they, they really seemed to not know where they were headed. So like right up until the end, um, George Martin in like the third episode uh, Paul's like, what do we, what songs do we even have? And and George Martin's the one who has the list of songs in his, in his, on a piece of paper. He shows them to them and they're like, oh. We have to, we have to take a step back here. Because if, if you think about it, the Beatles were creating. Like 50 years later, 60 years later, we know the history. But if you think about it, they were creating. They weren't thinking about what history is going to talk about 50 years from now. You know what I mean? So like they were almost too busy in the moment. I mean, you're a creative guy. You know that you get lost in it and it's just, oh, it's, yeah. you know, but you know, one other thing that I, I will kind of mention is one of the best kind of, I guess, foreshadowing things in, in the film is when Paul McCartney says uh, 50 years from now, they're just going to say that they broke up because she sat on, a, on an amplifier. In 50 years time, they broke up because Yoko sat on an amplifier. Remember the night you and me met Yoko, how amazing that was? And like right then and there, you just kind of see her warmth and what she is. Like she doesn't give a fuck. She really doesn't. You like, you know. And we went to her birthday celebration um, concert. That was amazing. You get to see her songs, but in a different context. Yeah, like people actually singing them and making them nice songs. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of artistry there. I have her poetry books yeah. stuff. You know, I'm a Yoko I, Yoko fan, but all I ever heard was during that session, she broke up the Beatles. In fact, I was at a Paul McCartney concert once, and this was after I met we met Yoko. And um, some guy was wearing a shirt that said, I still blame Yoko. 
And I was like, the balls, that guy, I, I, I really wanted to like punch him out because I was like, you know, you're just so ignorant. You don't understand yeah. the thing. And it, it just kind of pissed me off. But, um, but yeah, so I guess the way we're doing this, it seems like there's going to be eight episodes because I have eight questions. So <laughs> that was a good 10 minute chunk. There'll be eight, eight three hour episodes. And we'll have Peter Jackson direct it.